You want to do the intro? What's up, you guys? It's Find Us in Bangkok. You got to introduce yourself. My name's Amanda. You're definitely so much more charismatic. I'm, they're going to kick me off the show. Yeah. I'm going to get replaced by the better woman on this one. But do I take over the brand? How does that work? You are the brand. You heard it here first. Dixie <laughs> Baxies. All right. You did a great intro. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 17 of the podcast. Second episode hey. with the real star of the show, the bride of the wedding, the whole reason why we came to Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah. I'm Amanda Lim. What up? I'm your normal host, Connor Kaysen. Thanks for joining us on the show. Today, uh, we're just going to talk about what's been going on this last week. This last week's been uh, an emotional, crazy whirlwind for us. Something we weren't expecting, weren't ready for. A um, little bit of devastation. A little bit. A little bit of fun. Uh, it's been pretty wild. So we're going to go through that, but we want to make sure that we also provide some insight. So the second half of the show is uh, we're going to talk about language and just like getting by in Thailand, uh, give you a couple phrases that you should talk about and just kind of like what it's like to communicate uh, with food vendors and people and everyone else here in Thailand. So how you feel right now? Um, I'm really tired. <laughs> everyone flew in. My parents flew in. Everyone did not fly in. Not everyone. Who Let's flew right in? There. His family flew in. My family flew in. So we've got the core team here. Um, shout out to Julia and Matt Dickinson for showing up. And They're the first non-family members to show up to Bangkok. That we've gotten to see. Let's be very clear about that. Because I think technically the title goes to Nick and Kevin for being first in Thailand. They were first in Thailand. Shout but, out to Nick and Kevin. Yeah, they're in Chiang, Kong, Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai. So. Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been rough. It's been a rough few days. Um, uh, you know, I think I've had an anxiety attack. I've had a breakdown every day. Today's like the first day I haven't had one, which is really nice. And you could have. And I we got bad news. We got bad news got, and cancellations I woke, today. I woke up with bad news, and you know it's gotten to a point now where I've got my support team and my support system here, um, including my husband and my sister and my mom and my dad, and so I and you know my uh, my best friend. So now that I have a few people in my pocket on this side of the world, I feel a lot better. But I am still very much devastated still very much hurt and affected by cancellations and not to say that 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 was like any intention was to like hurt me they obviously have their own well-being that they need to look after they have loved ones that they have to think about as well it's just just sucks it's just unfortunate these are people that you and i both love these are people that you and i both were like so excited to be here so to catch people up on the story as you're going in here like half the people that have RSVP to the wedding have canceled the trip, let's say within the last three weeks total. Mm -hmm. Um, Going into February, we were at 120 total RSVPs. We had a few cancellations early. Uh, For whatever reasons, your cousin, uncle broke his foot, right? So like from things, you know, things that are totally unrelated, um, to the virus, but now, yeah, we're looking at like Half. 60, 60 yeah, people, 65. and that's a recording here on Friday night. The wedding is on Friday oh, the 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th. PM. The wedding is on Thursday the 19th, and who knows what will happen. I mean, we still, we, we only have a few people here right now, so you know, things could happen. Yeah. Trump has threatened and closed the border. He's threatened the state of Washington and California which is pretty much where everyone is coming from. And so... First things first, we want every one of our family to be here, but we also want you to be happy and healthy. So yeah, their health is by far the most important. I mean, yeah. we're, we're learning a lot, I think, about ourselves and each other and uh, just having to deal with this because it is out of our control and we understand that people got to... You, you should be making the best decision for ourselves. And who knows, if we weren't the host if we were just coming who knows what decision we would have made i'm so, like i can't even put myself in that position or to begin to think about that what that'd be like because yeah, yeah it would just be terrible and i think what's helped me a lot is um going on to the internet 
uh, aka Reddit, and being able to, to like look at other brides' posts and you know, good to know like I'm not the only bride freaking out, right? That's really comforting because I, you know, it is a very lonely spot because not everyone understands what I'm going through. Um, so being able to like empathize with other brides and their situation and. You know, there was this woman, uh, you know, I'm, if you're watching this, God bless you, but she has her wedding in May in Italy, and that, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah, so. well, at least they haven't gone yet, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, at least there's that. I'm sure that's such a mess, though. Yeah, I can't About, imagine. like, how do you figure out canceling all yeah. that and talking to vendors? And, and I would say that, you know, the one biggest giant underlying tone throughout not just myself as a bride but uh, other people as well from those posts is that you know thank god for our husbands and for what they they do to support us and you know they're our partners in crime and this really has like sickness and in health like ups and downs like connor has been with me and and really supported me and and made sure i'm okay yeah if we can get through this if we get home and we are healthy and everyone who came is healthy. It's a pretty big success at this point. <laughs> Mint. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I will. You know, we'll we'll figure it out, and we're gonna figure it out as we keep going. But you know, I just that I can only control what's in my control. And I can only respond. You know, with with what's going around me, with my own self reflection and attitude. So yeah. that's all I can do, and I am I'm lucky to have a husband who understands. So. Well, I'm proud of you. That's a change in perspective. Let's say from the beginning. Girl, of the week. I had a meltdown. Let me tell you. Yes, like, but we don't need to describe the meltdown. I don't have to. I was just saying, I have. <laughs> so I has a meltdown. I, one of the things we wanted to talk about was. Uh, everyone's asking, like, what's the situation here, right? And we kind of talked about that. We kind of talked about that last week about what was going on, what it was like, and and we mentioned that there's not, like, a big change here because they've been dealing with it. We've started to see some things that, uh, with everything happening around the world, that they are... Yeah. There's been some small changes to the fact. But uh, otherwise, it's still business as normal. Yeah, none of the businesses are closed. Everybody is out. Everyone's going to work. Public transportation's packed. It's kind of, yeah, it's business as usual now. There's just no tourists here, which is kind of crazy. And, uh, but where I was going with that was the day that Trump banned flights to the EU for supposedly for foreigners, not for Americans, um, the panic like really elevated. And you and I, we were dealing with a ton of cancellations coming in. Yeah. Right? It was like kind of all at once, all the flood. People were really worried and i started to get like really high anxiety because all i was doing was on the internet reading articles listening to videos um looking at twitter girl i was doing the same and just all of that stuff is so negative that's all you're gonna read on the internet there's not a lot of like positive stories coming out You know, there are some stories about people who have recovered, which are great, but it's a lot of, uh, just a lot of people scared right now and and rightfully so. Yeah. But then what we realized is like, all right, we got to get our ass out of this apartment and go outside. And all we did was walk outside and go eat at a little food cart across the street. And we sat down at lunch and there's this big rush because we're in this like business district and there was all these people out just Mm -hmm. normal, like having conversations going and getting lunch, hanging out. There was no panic. No one was stressed. No one was, I mean, we didn't really know what people were talking about, yeah. but there wasn't this like anxiety induced atmosphere. And like 20 minutes sitting there having lunch, we kind of looked at each other and was like, oh, like that's right. The world isn't completely on fire. Yeah. And uh, as humans, we're going to get through this and it's okay. And seeing what it's like here in Asia, like it's not new news for anybody here. This has been something that eight, over eight weeks ago was a situation here. So there might have been panic eight weeks ago, but they've also dealt with other uh, virus breakouts yeah. here on this part of the world. And we're just not used to that in America. So it's such a new thing yeah. for us. And it was so good for us just to like get off our phones, get off our computers and go outside and take a breath. And I understand a lot of people are on self-quarantine. If you're not feeling good, you should be in quarantine. 
Um, but and maybe this is wrong, but it's like there's no harm in going outside right now if you're in Seattle. Yeah, I th- <laughs> like, you yeah. can go. You can go for a walk. Yeah, I think the big thing is you know you should be informed. You should read the facts. But what you should not do is you should not hype yourself into a hysteria to the point that you are giving you're inducing your a self panic attack or a self anxiety attack, right? What you should do is you should stay up to date, stay informed, wash your hands, right? Use hand sanitizer, but you, your life is not this isn't the apocalypse in terms of like there's no zombies running around, right? So if, as long as you have that perspective, you're being vigilant, but you're not being, you know, tin foil hat then you're okay. Yeah, and I'm not a very anxious person, but surfing the internet uh, this week has made me so much more anxious, right? And you get that knot in your feeling. I'm sure a lot of you out there feel the same way, and I can only imagine with having previous anxiety issues and then stacking this on top of it, um, how hard that's gonna be. And all I gotta say is like, if you're feeling that way, like the first thing you gotta do is get off your phone. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> it's really like you got to take some time away from your phone because the internet is making it worse for you. Yeah. And that's kind of what I've realized is like, I've got to go digest it. Cause I want to know I need to stay informed, but it's small chunks, little bites, and then try to have yes. some other interaction somewhere else. Yeah. Life is meant to be lived, not feared. Um, and so, yeah, we're, I mean, we're getting through it. It's so when we saw your parents this morning and we saw my parents, it is such a big relief yeah. because no matter what, having those four people here and our siblings like are the most important people in our lives, and those are the most important people that we want to have here. So um, it really, the, the rest is just like we're so grateful to have anybody here at this point. Um, so thank you for anyone who can make it, and yeah, we're yeah. we're gonna get through it. Yeah, it's gonna we, be okay. And you know, I. I I'm sure there's been a couple of negative reactions or frustrations that I have vented, but we still love you guys. You know, we still care about you. We still love you. We understand your decision. We're not, you know, but it's, it is what it is. Yeah. And it's, you're not wrong for being emotional, being a bride and no, no bride deserves to have to deal with their wedding and have this situation going on. Um, But you know, this is an act of God really is and talk about a snowball <laughs> just let's add a bride and an international wedding and yeah, let's throw a little global pandemic in there yeah. see what happens it's crazy uh, we'll we'll always remember this for sure um yeah we'll tell our grandchildren about this one day no doubt um but all right so is there anything else that you wanted to talk about before we move into uh the lesson plan of the day <laughs> lesson plan what, what else is it? reading rainbow yes it is um no i think that's it if you plan on still coming we love you we're grateful for your presence it's just the cherry on top if you're not able to make it please keep yourself safe wash your hands yeah be, be smart at home especially all of you in seattle we know it's scary there right now and uh do what's best for you stay safe stay safe um good luck we'll see you in, in april when we get back or we'll see you here on the internet all right, let's move forward. Move forward with our lesson plan. Boom. Okay. Add a rainbow in there. I'm not editing a rainbow in that. I learned last week that I'd rather publish this right away because pe- Fine. people, Fine. yeah. If you want to edit it, go ahead. Boo. Rainbow. Thank you. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Amanda Show. <laughs> We're going to talk about education. <laughs> no, so so what we want to talk about and give you a few tips because we know uh, a lot of the people traveling here might be watching or listening to this, especially if you're on the plane or traveling here. Um, Amanda, up until her mom got here, was really good with her communication skills. She's really, I'm going to throw her under the bus because she's been so reading Rainbow here, but uh, right, Amanda is the leader when we're in Thailand. She's the one who takes us, uh, right? She's the one who looks Thai, so she leads the way when we walk through uh, sketchy markets and they look at her and she waves them off and then they don't even say anything to me. But then when Amanda's mom gets in town, Amanda's like, mom, can you order me a mango smoothie, please? What a backwards compliment. Just so many thoughts. I can speak, your mom's, your mom's great. I can speak a little Thai, but my mom, she full Thai. So when my mom, it's easier to communicate with someone who can speak the language. And so with my mom, it's easier to travel with her here because it's 
you know, she's a translator. Yes, we understand. Let's move forward. We only got so much time. Fine. Moving forward. I threw you so, under the bus. You didn't have to. God, you just, you, defend myself. You just got to say, see you later, bus, and let it drag you through the streets. <laughs> now you spent 15 more minutes talking about this bus. So anyways, here are three phrases that I think you should know in Thai to help you fend off and get you through some of these vendors. So the first is Sawadee. Sawadee. Sawadee is hello. If you are a boy, you will say Sawadee cup. Oh, let me backtrack. If you identify as a boy, you will say Sawadee cup. K, I think it's like K-R-U-P. Sawadee cup. Okay. That's if you're a boy. If you are identify as a girl, it is Sawadee ka. So K-H-A at the end. You always add K-H-A or K-R-U-P at the end. It's polite. It's just the nice thing to do. You don't want to come off as an a-hole. So Sawadee ka, Sawadee ka. Um, that's hello. Now, thank you is easy. So, uh, thank you is kak kun. So if you're if you identify as a boy, it is kak kun ka. If you are identifying as a female, it is kak kun ka. Okay, so ka. Kun. I don't know what that's like. Kak kun ka. Kak kun ka. I want to do a Dora the Explorer moment. Can you say kak kun ka? <laughs> Okay, so again, let's re- let's try this again. Hello, Sawadee ka. Sawadee krap. Kap kun ka. Kap kun krap. Okay, great, you did it, magic. So that is hello and thank you. Now very the, important. Very important. What about the why? Oh, the why is very. This is called a why, otherwise known as pray hands. Hashtag pray hands. Hashtag pray hands. Um, it's called a why. W a i, and it's just a great gesture. Instead of shaking hands, it's just a like hello thank you moment you live in your best life yeah whenever i come back from thailand i like do this so much <laughs> you don't shake hands you just do pray hands well related to that and the whole coronavirus we talked about earlier because they don't shake hands here they why and they bow towards each other and they say that we're curious if that has been a huge way to prevent community spread because shaking hands isn't as common um, just in general, a lot of the formalities are done with uh, well, the why and the sayings. Let's also be very clear. Thailand's also not a touchy, touchy yeah, country. Yeah, they're not, they're not a touchy country at all. Right, like a man so, that I very rarely even hold hands or yeah, PDA, show each other affection in public. PDA is not really a thing. No one really holds hands. Young lovebirds, if you are of the young variety, do. But otherwise, like, no one really holds hands, and it's not just a touchy country. Yeah, so I think naturally there's kind of, like, the community distance already, unless you're, like, on the train and it's crowded. Yes. Yes. Speak up. This is not on the agenda. Yes is chai. C-H-A-I. So chai. Chai ka. Chai crab. (laughs) That one took a bit. Chai. No is my. Like, my Thai, but my so uh, you could say things like uh, meow ka, my or meow crap. So meow means uh, no, I don't want, in a very polite way. So meow, it's almost like a like an Asian meow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> meow crap. Meow ka. But that's nice, like when you're walking through any of uh, the markets and you're getting solicited constantly, especially if you look more like me versus looking more like Amanda. Um, you get solicited by everybody. I mean, whether it's to get a tuk-tuk or a taxi or uh, even a ping-pong show. So no is my, so like a like my Thai, right? So, but you can say my ao ka. My ao ka means no, I don't want. Or my ao krap. My ao ka. If you are identifying as a boy, so no is my. Yes is chai. And then always add a ka or cup at the end. Very important. Very important. Do you want me to And do you're going to be saying those things a lot. A lot. Should I do any more? Um, so what did we cover again? We said so, hello. We said thank you. Yes and no. Um, what else? So when it comes to like language and getting by, you, you, know, you know those four things and that's really nice. It's great. It, thank you goes a long way in my opinion. Because they already look at you or they look at me. And they immediately just go like, that guy doesn't speak Thai. And so I think like the little bits help, 
but what about when it comes to like ordering food or buying things or um, like do people speak English? It, yeah. Bangkok is a very metropolis type city. It's like New York. So a lot of people speak Thai and a little bit of English. A little, a no, very no, little no. bit. So a little English. So most of the time, if you ask them like, you know, how much is this? Or what's this? Or, you know, what what's in this? They'll probably give you some sort of broken version of it, but they'll be able to answer you. So you'll have an idea of like, this is, you know, this is 40 baht, this is 50 baht, this is, this is beef, this is chicken. You'll be able to, to get by, no problem. Now, if you go to a very, very remote village or you go to a remote town, yeah, if you go to Bangkok, a, if you go to a remote neighborhood, you can, yeah, just be, you know, might not be as much English as you're expecting here in Bangkok, but most of Bangkok can speak a little English. I mean, if you're in any like market or mall or anywhere there's any bit of tourism happening, then you're gonna find people who can get through the situation with English, or if it comes to negotiation, they always pull out a calculator. Like we were at the mall uh, looking at rings, and they pull the calculator out, and they they're right, they crunch numbers about how to give you a discount. Check out. And uh, yeah, when it, mo money's the big thing, right? It's like you go buy three bowls of noodles, and it's 150 baht, do you know what 150 baht is? I don't know what 150 Yisip, is. Yisip, Yisip ha, no. Okay, but you don't know what 150 <laughs> is. Oh, And well, so uh, yeah. some people would write it down on a piece of paper. If you have paper, that's kind of nice also. You can kind of just like write it down and they'll figure it out. Um, but a lot of times they will, you know, they'll, they'll figure it out for you. People, people have been extremely helpful and flexible uh, when it comes to getting paid. Loy Hasit Bakha. Great job. 150. Uh, I, I can't check your work. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. She's right. Yep. Ding. But, yeah, you just struggle through it. I think that's kind of part of the ambiance of coming to a place like this and going. And if you find some food that you want to order, you just kind of, like, tough it out. And people are very, very accommodating to tough it out for you. Um, Thai people are very nice. They're very polite. As long as you are nice and polite. As long and kind as you are them, nice and polite and kind. To they're them. very sweet and very helpful, and yeah. they'll, they'll help you. They, even if you don't know what the street food is, if you just want whatever, just say point in that one of those. They'll figure it out. They'll hook you up, and they'll make sure you're taken care of. Yeah, or they might give you the falang price, but that happens sometimes. Falang. Oh, that's not. That's a good language one. <laughs> language time. So, um, falang. It's F A R A N G, Farang. It's almost like an R but an L. Farang means foreigner. So if you hear Farang, that means they talk they about talk. you. But with me, they're not really sure. I always get the squinty eyes. They're like, do I, do I speak Thai or do I speak English? You, yeah, you get Thai a lot. And then it's like, oh, uh oh. Oh, Thai but I And then I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, she's with that white guy back there. I know, but Oops. sometimes I can understand. It's just very little, but a lot of squinty eyes when it comes to me. It's just like, mm, don't know what to do here. Anywho. But um, have you used Google Translate at all? Nope. Nope. Don't. I, here's the thing. I really don't feel the need to because whether they understand Thai, or my broken Thai, or whether they understand, you can struggle through it. No one. It's not a really big deal here. This isn't like you're going to starve. Most menus will have an English version. If, if, there, if there's a menu, yeah, there's a lot of English on the menus. Yeah, there's definitely an English version. There's definitely, if you have dietary restrictions, they're very accommodating about that. Especially, there's like, we passed a vegan restaurant, a vegetarian restaurant. There are so many of those. Um, so don't worry about your dietary restrictions. You can struggle through that too. They will figure it out. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Um, yeah, I would say a, a tip. If you do have specific dietary restrictions, um, the things you can't have, I would assume if you just say uh, my, and then if you didn't want chicken, right? Say my guy. My, <laughs> You see what I did there? You <laughs> love that one, didn't you? My guy is a, My a guy. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Sorry, I 
That can was, I, can I knew I that was it? coming, and I was just like, yes. Connor so badly wants to teach our kids lady. Like, I don't want no carrots, lady. <laughs> so I threatened him with, I'll teach them my guy, and now he loves it too much. So now he wants to teach yeah, our kids. Yeah, definitely want like, my like, little. Get that juice box away from me, my guy. No, you always put it in such a negative term. I want it in like a positive. All right. Right? Like, shout out to Randy. I want Randy to come over, and they'd be like, what's up, my guy? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's so much more positive in a way than what you're putting it in. But, all right. I just, we I digress. Imme- I immediately go to a New York accent for that one. We digress. So we're at 26 minutes. Three minutes. Um, but, yeah, you have any closing thoughts? We're so excited for everyone to start getting here, like getting Snapchats and Instagrams of people, like, getting on planes and yeah, arriving is, like, it's made us feel so much better about this whole thing. I think the first, what, eight days that we were here, it was like cancellation, 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 issue, wedding loop that we got to jump through, issue, problem. Here's a, a bill that we didn't know we were going to get, you know, typical wedding drama. Um, and now once we start getting people here, like we went out to dinner with our family and the people have shown up and it was like, oh man, like this is so cool that we're in this foreign country in this different place and we're with all these people that we love um right like matt's like oh like i traveled all the way around the world to hang out with you (laughs) and didn't bring any shorts um here's the thing we're very excited this is a once in a lifetime opportunity had i known my horoscope said that 30 was not going to be a good age yes would have changed the idea, but yep. maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we learned this week that her horoscope said that one of uh, the bad luck ages was going to be 30. And Amanda turned 30, like, what, two days before we left here? I know. <laughs> like, so if you were born in 1990, year of the horse, sorry to show my age, but if you're born in 1990, year of the horse, 30 ain't your year, girl. 30 ain't your year. So now you know. Be precautious. Yeah, it was crazy that we learned that here. That was wild. That wild was situation. Like, you don't need to put salt in the wound. Piece of yeah. paper. You don't need to put salt in the wound. And if this would have been a normal episode, some of the things that we didn't talk about that were fun this week, we went to a fashion show put on by Her oh, Royal Highness, Highness, the Princess of the King, yes. and that was epic. We sat behind these movie stars. Shout out to P-Fame. Yeah, I don't know cool. how she got us those seats. It, it was crazy. I was so underdressed. Amanda looked wonderful. A bunch of people gave me compliments on how wonderful, and they wanted photos. I said, you got to message you if you want the photos. So. Oh, yeah. Message me on Instagram. I'm friendly, too. Oh, it's all kind of a blur now. But we're looking forward. I mean, the next podcast, we're going to be married. The next time the next show listen to this is we be married. I know. I will also have a ring. We got to go buy rings. That's kind of a big thing. We left we a lot do. of things last minute. And uh, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, we hope to see you all soon. Mwah.